Okay guys, uh, welcome back. I want to make uh, one last soybean cultivation video. Uh, this is the bottom uh, that I showed you uh, field cultivating and planting. It was the last soybean planting for the year. Went in that last week of June. So ironically, uh, you know, it had rained, uh, you know, up to that point in time and then the rain shut off. There was uh, some pretty good weed cover out here in spots. Uh, but anyway, we feel cultivated twice and planted. Uh, it has not rained on these beans since that, uh, since they were planted. Uh, that's why the beans are so big and I haven't been in a hurry to get out here. Uh, we did rotary hoe it in real good time. There was enough moisture to bring some foxtail, but uh, when you look down in the rotary hoe, uh, <laughs> the, and you look in the row, the rotary hoe killed all the foxtail. So in this particular bottom, our competition is that velvet leaf and that customer right there, cocklebur. And uh, that cocklebur came at the same time as the soybean plants. Uh, lack of moisture has caused that there was just a little bit of a emergence you know the emergence wasn't perfectly even because they were a little bit short of moisture but we are using the spike cultivator and we're increasing the speed to the point that we are pushing dirt in the row uh, some of the larger cockleburs that one well that one's dead uh, but some of the larger that one's dead too Trying to find an example here of a cucklebur right next to the row that has been weakened. And since he is weakened, uh, he will live, but he will be weakened. And when we come along, you know, in another week or two with the uh, big cultivator and move dirt, we will be able to kill him. There's an example of one. He's been weakened, he's been pushed down. Uh, I don't know if his root has been cut. Let's see if his root has been cut. His root was weakened, but I don't think it was cut all the way through. Anyway, you knock them down a little bit and you will be able to kill them uh, with the next pass. But So these dry conditions, uh, this field is going to look perfect. Uh, the dry conditions, which is making the herbicide injury and the other uh, bottoms uh, look horrible as aided in the weed control here but uh, these late planted beans are looking good so with the spike tooth I am going fast enough that I am pushing dirt into the row uh, you know historically I would have used the rolling shield cultivator with the Danish tines but I am finding on these, you know, beautiful long straight bottom rows that using the spike teeth there and the narrow setting uh, works just about as good uh, if you don't have clods or a lot of residue. Uh, you can use your speed to push dirt in the row. And when the beans are bigger like this, uh, you don't need the rolling shields. You can just use your speed to control the amount of dirt that's going into the row and then you can obviously change your depth uh, depth and speed those are the two things that you're modifying here to get the right amount of dirt in the row uh, here on the shanks you can see you know the what that wet June gave us was some foxtail residue left over uh, from all of the rain in May and June before planting uh, there was a lot of foxtail out here. So foxtail in this bottom, the concerns would be velvet leaf, uh, cocklebur, and foxtail. Uh, the dry weather in the rotary hoe has wiped out the foxtail. And uh, the dry weather has also, we really are dealing with only the flush of cockleburs that came uh, at planting. Uh, there are a few that survived the uh, field cultivation, but they're few and far between. And so let's run just a little bit. I think I've already made these points, guys. Uh, but uh, when you have that 
narrow gap. This is the spike cultivator or the prototype cultivator with the 10, 10 and a half inch gap. When you have that tight gap, you really need to know where you're going. And so I am not looking back. Uh, by the time I turn my head and turn back forward, I would be off the row. And so once again, you're left with looking in your mirrors. You can glance at your mirrors real fast. Uh, the other thing that I found is that I was having such a hard time looking back and starting and stopping does not give you an adequate picture of what you need to know. You need to know how the elevator is working in process. And so, uh, once again, I had Dane ride with me, uh, killing a couple birds with one stone there, having him ride with me. Not only am I teaching him the fundamentals of cultivation, but I'm teaching him how to read the cultivator in motion and how to make the adjustments, you know, of depth and speed and having him repeat stuff back to me. Uh, but you really, on those first setups, you know, we were making multiple depth adjustments before we got everything set the way we wanted it. But it was very helpful to have him along and he was uh, telling me what was going on with the cultivator house and track and how much dirt is moving. Uh, one of the things that we did find, and I've noticed this before, with my planter, looking out at the ridges here, I don't know why, but right between the tractor is always the highest ridge uh, right after planting. And so when I'm coming by with this first cultivation, we have to pay a special attention you know, depending on the soil type and the bottom and how much uh, dirt got pushed up on that center ridge. The depth of that row unit makes a huge difference on this first cultivation. Then you really have to uh, figure out the depth according to the height of that ridge. But anyway, a beautiful field of soybeans and we'll clean it up and uh, we will get it cultivated. So they're talking in the short term uh, like starting on Wednesday through Sunday, we're going to have upper 90s, we're going to have brutal heat. And so I really don't want to cultivate in that brutal heat, so we're pushing to get this job done today before the heat sets in. A uh, little bit of luck, we'll be able to get the field done uh, before I got to go mow hay this afternoon. So anyway, thanks guys.